body. Obviously, his coach, Steve Bailey. Lucas, huge win. Congratulations. Huge knockout. Thank you very much. Open, open it up for questions. Kevin Garcia with Fight Hype. Lucas, I mean, just the obvious question. An amazing win for you. How do you feel? I feel good. Um, I knew uh, it was only a matter of time before I got him. I knew he was going to be super tricky at the beginning, super fast, uh, very, very good boxer, good counter puncher. But I knew um, second half of the fight, his head's going to be in the middle and I'm going to catch him. And I, and I did exactly what I thought I was going to do. Can you, talk to, can you talk to us, excuse me, about the knockout and how you saw it, especially, you know, in the fight and then maybe even after looking back at it? Um, yeah, like I said, it's, I expected that. I expected it. I mean, I didn't start off good. My, my legs were like in quicksand. Um, <clears throat> but I took this fight on, you know, three and a half weeks notice and I didn't have the best preparation for it, but I knew this was my opportunity. So uh, I took it. No doubt. And look, you know, obviously we heard you in the ring um, right away, right after your victory. It seems like you got a response. Kid Austin's calling for that fight in November. Can you talk to us about your desire uh, in your next fight? Do you want to see Kid Austin? Could it be an H2O rema uh, rematch? Anything's possible at this point. I mean, I'm, I'm open to anything. We'll see what, what happens in the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm open for anything. Yeah, I want Kid Austin on that Mike Tyson, uh, Jake. Paul on your card, sure, let's do it. Anyone else? Uh, okay, if nobody else is gonna ask. <laughs> yeah, huge win, huge knockout, come on. For sure, for sure. I mean, not boxing related, but I got another question for you if everybody else is gonna be quiet. You're Canadian, man. How do you feel about Drake Kendrick? What's your opinion on that? <laughs> To be honest, I don't pay attention to any of okay. that. Okay. <laughs> All good. All good. I don't good. even know what the, what's going on. I know that they're, they're, they're uh, chirping each other and making these diss songs, but I don't pay attention to that. What does it mean for you to get a win like that in front of a crowd like that, to have that kind of moment? Um, I mean, this, this kind of shows what I'm about. Um, I knew I was going to get a nice knockout. And uh, it, it came at the perfect timing. I took some shots early on, but like I said, I knew that it was gonna come and it was just a matter of time. What did it mean, like this whole week, we saw it at the weigh-in, we saw it at um, the open workout. You had fans the entire week just going crazy. They were trying to chant in your name louder than they chew out every event. How did that feel for you? That felt amazing. Uh, I got the support behind me. I got Canada behind me. And uh, I hope I made a lot more fans Tonight. You got Jake Paul behind you? Yeah. Jake Paul was chanting my name with my with my people. It was hilarious. <laughs> I don't think he knew what he was doing, but it was, it was so funny. This is uh, Johnny from Boxing Boys. Do you think that this knockout took over the knockout of the year? Absolutely. Been. Absolutely. Who, who's going to top that? Nothing's going to get close to that. I have to agree. <laughs> I'm a free agent promotionally and uh, yeah my next fight I want something big so we're we're open to any uh, any opportunities that come our way that's a great way to lobby for it Lucas uh, Cardo the face of boxing news is there any promoter in particular that you're interested in working with I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm open to anything. Uh, MVP did an amazing job this week. They took very good care of us. I mean, uh, if, if they're interested in doing something, we're, uh, we're open to, uh, to options for sure. Tell me the last fighter who took a fight and threw its nose and did that. On week. This professional boxing too. I mean, we do 10 rounds for a reason. Fight him one after round one, two, three, four, five. Nine, four, four. Give him a full camp, give him full preparation. He might not come out and do it. Anything else? Eric Richter, New York Post. Uh, have you been on social media at all? You were trending on Twitter, like the number one thing for at least an hour. Uh, have you been on social at all? Have you been uh, putting your social media accounts out there at all or anything? Yeah, I mean, I've been taking a look. It's kind of overwhelming with all the uh, the messages and this and that. So 
I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'll have time tonight to even go through the mods. It's just pretty crazy right now. Thank you. Number one trending New York Post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not good of the year. A lot of people made a lot of money tonight. A lot of money. I would have told you to put the house on it. I got a question for you. As the fight went on, is this something you and your opponent noticed technically as the fight was going on? Were there some mistakes that you thought or some openings that you thought you could take advantage of as the fight was going on strategically? Yeah, I mean, like I said, he was doing the things, the things he was doing uh, defensively and uh, we knew that he was going to make these mistakes. So it was, like I said, it was only a matter of time before I catch him. I just, I didn't have my feet like set under me. I felt like my, my legs were like, I don't know, a little bit weak. So that's why I took a little bit more shots than I normally take. I honestly, I never, I never get touched, but uh, he was he was quick. He was a fantastic boxer, and uh, I, I got him at the perfect timing. He stayed, he stayed calm under pressure. He yeah. made the right adjustments, started throwing with him, took some power off the shots. He was loading up a bit too much too early. I think it was after the fifth I told him to take a bit of weight off the shots, <coughs> throw him at a time, throw with him as he throws, throw with him. Because Sylvie's best offense always leaves him at his most vulnerable. His head goes right up the middle. So we knew that the more the fight went, even if it wasn't going our way, the more vulnerable he, he would become. Because he couldn't hold, hold himself back, he couldn't contain himself to keep coming forward. So even if we were losing nine rounds, we still would have been calm in the corner. We still would have thought we were going to knock him out. Was it because of the short notice that your life was stiff? Um, Possibly, I mean, I, w I felt like I was in good shape, but uh, yeah, I just, I didn't have that, that twitch in my legs. Is this the first time it's happened or? Um, man, I've, I've had tons of amateur fights. I'm sure it's happened before. I just, uh, I, I, yeah, like I said, I didn't have a complete camp. So I got good sparring, but you know, maybe we would have done something different if we had more time. Last question, just one last one. That was arguably the best four punch combination of the night on the knockout. When you hit him with that third punch, did you know he was out? Yeah. Yeah, just the way I caught his chin, I knew that he was not getting up. I mean you can tell by my reaction. Um, I was happy he was he was okay afterwards. Um, because he's a really he's actually a really nice kid and I uh, got a lot of respect for him. Well, Yahoo Sports has got you down for knockout of the year. I know we discussed it a few minutes ago, but it's all over, it's all over, I can say, social media and the big sports out there, so man. That's awesome. Got a big running back down the that, that was That's probably awesome. the best four punch combination of the last 10 years. <laughs> Each one landed clean and hard. Thank you guys, appreciate you.